Greetings, this is I, Tantus Narayman Jacobin, your Lord and Emperor here at the Jacobin Empire, and welcome once more to those of you joining me today, whether it's live over on Twitch or joining me later on when it's uploaded over onto YouTube. Hello, everybody. Welcome, one and all. I hope you're ready to talk about more Pathfinder lore today. We're going to be diving into it. For those of you on YouTube, remember to like that bell, ring the, uh, ring the bell, like the video, and leave a comment. Subscribe. My question for today, have you been to Holomog? Because we're diving into the Galarian Pathfinder lore and going to the nation of Holomog today and learning about it. Now I'm going to say, I think this is a nation that I have enough information I'm going to provide for you that I don't necessarily need to revisit if we get a major book on it. We have enough information for Holomog that I'm going to talk about because we have it juxtaposed together from a lot of different sources that, honestly speaking, they might develop more, and there might be new books that will come out that will give us more on Holobog, deeper into depths into it. But I think I've got enough to go over the basics of it. Motorcycle, driving by. Rum, 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 rum. Unnecessary. Where I like to start, as always, are the books you might want to check out. And this is going to be a complex one, because as I said, unfortunately for Holobog, there isn't actually one good source for it. We have a lot of little sources which give us a full bits of information of it. From first edition, the Inner Sea World Guide does give us some information and Distant Shores, and then also the Merchant's Manifest. These three books give us some of the basics from first edition. Uh, the Seekers of Secrets also is there too. When we move on to second edition, the Lost Omen Travel Guide, and from the Blood Lord's Adventure Path, Field of Maidens. Because that deals with Geb and the Field of Maidens and something related to what's happening in Holomog. So th that's why it's there. Alright. So. Who is Holomog? What are Holomog? Well, Holomog is a matriarchy. And it's on the one of the coastal nations in southern Grund. So if you're looking on the map of Grund, the continent, we have a lot of information about northern Grund. From the Osirian region to the Mwangi Expanse, that's northern Garund. That's maybe about a third to a half of the continent. The lower halves, we really only know about a couple of nations. And Holomog is one of those nations, which we have a pretty chunk of it. It is considered to be one of the regions, southern Garund's, two most powerful nations alongside Druun. Druun I might do a video on, I might not, because that's one I have less information on is war, a nation of warriors, artisans, with traditions that actually go back to the time of ancient Aslan and Earthfall. And it does control a large section of Grun's southeastern coast. You're not seeing, but I'm flipping off this person. Holomog is also known as the Land of Celestial Concurrence. Its current leader is uh, o Amwa, Halo, and Nyana. And as I said, it's a matriarchy. It exports spices from Anilui that are traded along the Ar Arakops steppes. Anilui being the one of the cities that we know about. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute here. That's the symbol I'm showing off here is the symbol of the city of Anilui the northernmost city of Holomog. Anilui's markets are some of the largest and most prosperous in the country. So it is an important city to talk about. <clears throat> the thing is, I also don't have the capital of Holomog. So it lies between the Obari Ocean to the east and the arid lands that border the Mwangi expanse to the west. It shares a border with Geb to the north. The northernmost city is Anilui. It has 14 provinces that we know the names of. The inner star is Juta, Kayalu, Zuntinsa. I'm going to butcher some of these. The outer provinces are Aruntar, Bayal, Dalgana, Holu, the, Brighton, uh, the Blighted Province, Guam, Guam, Guamne, Jula, Krololi, Latvia, Nawan Yi, Tinhiri, Shanjalia. I hope I didn't butcher those too much. 
the inner star, I'm assuming that within Julatar, uh, Kylo Zunishta is where the capital actually is. Though, so, again, the only city we really know a lot about is Anuli, also known as the City of New Beginnings. It's the northernmost of the nation of Holomog. It's closest to Geb. It wraps around Oyster Sound to the east, a large, uh, large round crater lake in the larder. It's protected Holomog's northern borders from incursions of armies from Shori and from Geb. It is like probably one of the more military cities. It's a large city. Uh, it's got a council matriarchy of the government. In 4606, it was rocketed by a powerful explosion known as the Paro, Paro Six, which annihilated a large portion of the northern city, killed its current queen and all of her successors. They recovered the disaster with the aid of the rest of the nation and elected the druid Matoji as their new queen. Uh, the chief physical mark of it is the crater, which I mentioned, the large crater lake. The cause of the explosion is unknown. Most suspect Geb, which could lead to war. I mean, it's like, ah, Geb did it. We'll get revenge kind of thing, because that's only like not that long ago. So we do have some basic history of Holomog. And to this, we have to turn to this being here, one of the Imperial Lords. Why? Well, Earthfall happened. During that time, there was people living in this region. It was a collection of city-states in the region of Holomog. People that weren't really related to a lot of the great empires, but managed to survive and have a level of civilization. And then the end of the world effectively happened. The people here petitioned the Imperial Lords to basically help them survive the great destruction of Earthfall and the Age of Darkness that would follow. And it worked. Maz Ludeh led a coalition of the Lords from three celestial planes to form the Celestial Concordance of the Holomog province that led to the protection of these people and established the government of Holomog that they continue to have today. The divinely transformed monarchs, uh, the Omwas. Now, this isn't to say that everything has been peace within Holomog. During volume, if we look to Volume 4 of the Pathfinder Chronicles, there was the visit of the legendary Pathfinder, Dervin Guest, and the Pirate Cream, Mastron Slash, to Holomog. Guest abandoned Slash at the Southern Cliffs, but she eventually was able to actually install herself as Holomog's ruler. It's matriarchy, she's a woman. <laughs> Under her leadership, Holomog changed dramatically had military expansion, reached as far as the borders with Geb. This military expansion came to the end in 4329, when Geb turned a large portion of Holoma's army to stone, creating the Field of Maidens on Geb's southern border. Basically a field of stone statues of people. <clears throat> so at some unknown point, though, Holomog was the source of the very first legates, to appear in the inner sea regions. They were ambassadors similar to paladins, except rather than crusaders, they were peaceful diplomats. Anybody who thought they were defenseless were sorely mistaken. So that's basically the history we know. It had the celestial protection. Someone, a pirate queen, took over, like, for a, a number of hundred years ago. Military expansion happened. Defeat but that came to Holomog at current borders. So we turn to Holomog today. This is a Gonzi. I've talked about it in a different video. That would be, you know, you can check out my previous videos that I've talked about the Gonzi. So as it stands today, Holomog still is a matriarchy. It's not evil. You'd think it would be good with the celestial connections, but a lot of stuff has happened there. It suffers from political intrigue, chaos cults, the influence of Geb, the evil nation of undead at its borders, and basically 10,000 years worth of abandoned cities and ruins. It is the only known nation on all of Galarian that has been continuously exposed to energies from the outer planes for millennia. That's had a lot of side effects, including the Ganzi being in large portions in this country. The Ganzi do appear in other places in Galarian, but as a specific group of people, a versatile heritage, a 
planar heritage, they pretty much are mostly in Holomog. Now, there are rumors that Holomog is preparing for war these days, but... And also, after their history of having already built many ancient ruins, they are actually renowned for civil engineers and demolitionists, because they deal with a lot of their ancient ruins. So who lives here? Well, we know Gonzi do. They are a large population. The largest population of all Galarian live in Holomog. They've done a lot, actually, to increase the art and culture of Holomog, and are directly linked to a lot of it there. You could also find megafauna, large dinosaurs, some that are domesticated, some used for travelers, um, large megafauna such as dinosaurs, not just dinosaurs. Others roam less populated areas of the nation, and some can actually spread all the way down to Droon, which is the other nation I mentioned to their southern border. Now finally, we can talk about religion a little bit, and this is Grandmother Spider, who's a, technically a minor religion, but I, you know, I have a picture of her. Because the Imperial Lord uh, Masluda is the patron goddess of Halimah, basically due to her actions during Earthfall and forming the celestial accordance of Halama provinces, you know, that protect the nation from devastation. She still is very important to Halamog. Not the only deity, not the only Imperial Lord, but there is that large connection to her as the head of this council that protected the Legion. As the Grandmother Spider, who I'm showing off here, is another important figure. She has a presence there. She doesn't have direct worship. She has one of her schools, called Mama Schools there, the Brightwater School is a large source of scholarship and learning in the country. One of the largest. So yeah, as another deity, yeah, worship's not the same for Grandmother Spider, but she has a she has influence on the region, which makes her an important character to talk about in High Blades. But yeah, that will be it though for Holoma. And I said when I started this video, I didn't think there was a... There's not a lot about Holomog. Like, this bit of information here gives you the point and gets you to understand what Holomog is. And I think that's why, when I looked into this, I thought this video would do very well. Because we do have enough information to understand the basics of Holomog. There's probably a lot about its history with, you know, 10,000 years of history, probably. That There's a lot of interesting... 10,000 plus. That a lot of interesting things have happened that could be dealt with. And a lot of interesting stories to be told. Knowing about its provinces, its cities. We only know about one city. We really only do. We have some basic maps that we know where all the provinces are. The borders of Holomog on Garund. There is a lot of information here. But there's also just not. And I think that's a thing to kind of say about here. I can tell you nothing about any of its individual provinces. We have an idea about the place. We have a, this core aspect of what the country is, and that's very important to the country. So I think that's why we understand through the basic history, through the expansionist, through its combat with Geb, and what it kind of is today is this kind of mixed place that still exists, that still has this little bit of ancestry of a bunch of city-states that got together. Because there is a little bit of, like, individuality when you talk about the various cities and stuff. Remember, I talked about Anuli, and Anuli had its own queen in charge of it. Meaning that Halamog still is a collection of queens in the various cities and regions. That we have this Omal Halo Enya, uh, in Inyana, who is probably the effectively high queen of all of Halamog above everyone but each own city has their own queen all their own different councils and stuff each of their own regions might be like that we can kind of defer information from what we've been given on how Holomog works as a nation it still has that city-state mentality even after these thousands and thousands of years but they're united together to protect their lands and probably have a strong connection especially when that pirate queen Pirate Queen Slash basically took over and drove military conquest, carving out their current borders, which is less than a thousand years ago. You have to think about that. That's probably the outer provinces. The inner star may have been the core, with maybe little bits in here of parts of the outer provinces, 
for thousands upon thousands of years of Holomog's history. There's so much more that would be interesting to explore that would make adventures here very cool, but still enough that I think I think I've told you enough for now. I think it gets you chomping at your bits and when like, come on, Paizo, give us a little bit more about us. Show us some more. Show me where I can go with my stories in this place. I think that's where we're kind of doing it. But maybe, you know, if the huge update that provides billions of tons of information ever happens, maybe I'll do an update video on this. But I think this might be enough for you guys. It might be. Just maybe. And I hope you enjoyed learning about such an interesting place. Because it is interesting. And it is a powerful power in Grunt. It controls a large portion of that southeastern coastline. And probably one of the most powerful nations in that region. One to be respected. I mean, they've competed with Geb for long enough. <laughs> Geb. <laughs> Geb's quite a place. Anyway, I will leave it off there for today. Hope you enjoyed. Remember, check out all my other stuff. All these kind of videos go up on YouTube later on, so if you missed come joining me live, you can always check it out there. Uh, if you're looking for the tabletop schedule, if you're joining me live for these things, it's Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, with Saturdays, a backup day if I have to miss any of those for family obligations and stuff like that, that I record these, then they go up on YouTube. I have a live play of Pathfinder First Edition on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. EST. That's Crimson Queen. Always check it out. Very fun. Discussing Tabletop Saturday at 6 p.m talk show we talk about news of the week deeper discussion topics that dive into some interesting tabletop related topics i do some gaming streams on other days of the week if you're going to join me on twitch those don't go up on youtube though i do have social media discord twitter.com check those out that has schedules cat pics all that kind of stuff and i think there's all the kind of shout outs i want to give in this little blurb here at the end but to all of you out there, I hope you enjoyed. I like visiting nations like this that involve adventures, play, you know. This one, we got chunks of it and a big piece of it from an adventure path. You know, Anuli kind of hits an adventure path. And we get information here and there from various sources. And yeah, we get the big books sometimes, but I just like visiting places like this where we can learn enough that it just wets your whistle and makes you want to explore more of this really cool world that Pies has been crafting. Regardless, though, until the next time I talk about Pathfinder lore or any other kind, to all of you out there, I bid you a deep and wonderful farewell.